Welcome back to Cultivating Connections. I'm Amanda Brezanarius, Communications Director for National Grange. And today we are celebrating the first day of dairy month, the first day of June, and talking about our 154th annual National Grange Convention. 154 years is a heck of a long time. Um, and our meetings have not always been exactly the same. And I think that that's the message we'll be hearing a little bit today about our meeting coming up in November. So uh, we have several folks on with you, but to start, uh, we have National Grange President Betsy Huber, who's gonna tell us a little bit about what is going on with this convention. So Betsy. Hello, everybody. Good evening, evening here in the East anyway. Uh, before I get into the convention, I just wanna mention that um, today we kind of paid for the privilege of being near the White House in Washington, DC. Um, you've read, you've seen on the news about all the riots in cities and we experienced that in DC over the weekend. Uh, only minor damage. We're very thankful that we just had one pane of a window broken and a little bit of graffiti on the wall. So we're very happy, hopeful that uh, tonight and the next few days will not bring any more damage. So just keep the whole situation in your prayers, keep our building in your prayers and our, our tenants and our staff please. So about convention, um, I am really disappointed <laughs> the way things have turned out. You know, Pennsylvania is my home state and Valley Forge is one hour away from my home. I was so looking forward to welcoming everybody to my home uh, this year. And uh, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Um, our members' safety is our first concern. So that's uh, why we're taking the steps that we have taken. Um, the executive committee had long discussions on this matter at uh, our meeting earlier, early in May and came to this decision to protect our members. The convention will be cut down to two business days. And um, the only thing that's going to happen is action on resolutions. So the only people that will be coming to session will be the delegates, the state masters and spouses or second delegates that the states elect to send. So um, no visitors, no guests, no other Grangers. We're very sorry, but there's not going to be anything to see anyway, <laughs> except for resolution work. Um, we have others, uh, directors on tonight who are going to tell you a little bit about their plans. Um, but because, because of the safety of our members, we know that um, members have underlying health conditions that would make it dangerous for them to come. And we don't really know what the situation is going to be like in November. Um, I'm thinking that airline travel is still going to be something that I wouldn't want to do <laughs> to be for hours in a confined space like that. So we just felt that this was the best uh, thing to do we're still going to have the convention with the delegates, do the business of the Grange, and make other arrangements for all the, all the other extra activities that we normally have at a convention. We are very fortunate that our hotel is allowing us to redo the contract. Um, we don't have any definite um, final decision on that yet, but I'll be meeting with them again on Wednesday um, by phone, of course, and uh, see what we can negotiate. But they've been very cooperative so far. They're still closed. They've been closed since about March 13th, 
and our area of Pennsylvania is still in the red zone, which means we're still uh, shut down completely. So um, even if we finally get to the green, there's still a limit on how many people can gather. So for all those reasons, that's why we've made this decision. And uh, we're sorry that we won't get to greet you all there in November, but uh, keep participating in these uh, Facebook Lives and we'll keep in contact that way. So Amanda, are you gonna introduce the next speaker? Yeah, so um, if we have any questions for Betsy, I'll just remind you, you can put them in the comments um, and I'll make sure to field the questions to the correct presenter. Uh, the next person up that can talk a little bit about programs and uh, the contests that are going on in her department is Loretta Washington, who is our sales membership recognition programs, uh, director among about three other titles. So Loretta, you have multiple things under your jurisdiction that you can talk about. So welcome. Thank you, Amanda. Um, I have several things underneath of my head and we'll start off with the one that seems to be the very hot topic right now is the Distinguished Grange. Um, we are going to do that program. We're asking the Granges to fill out the application the best of their ability. We know a lot of the activities and events you might not was able to have because of COVID-19, but we still want you to fill those forms out and get those back to us on August 1 as the deadline. Don't worry about the points. We will total up the points and we might have a different point system, but we feel that everyone that completes the form um, because of the virus, we will do our best to make sure everyone is recognized and that recognition will come probably um, right after convention and certificates will be placed in the mail to those um, folks that um, submit the applications in. The next one is the Grange Legacy Program. We know there are some folks that um, might come up for the Grange Legacy this year. We are still going to do that. We ask that you just complete the form out um, and send that back to us. And that deadline is August the 3rd um, for the Grange Legacy. Grange in Action is going to happen also. And with the Grange in Action, I can probably say a lot of our Granges are doing things that they can um, come up with three photos. I'm sure of somebody making the mask. I'm sure of someone um, serving food or taking food to first responders. And maybe you did something to recognize your high school seniors this year in your neighborhood. So those are three good things right there for Grange in Action that you all could be doing. And the deadline for the Grange in Action uh, this year is September the 25th. With all the programs that I've talked about, the certificates will be mailed back to you all when we, um, after convention, when we finish convention, those certificates will be mailed directly to you all. Amanda, I think I've counted those three things that's underneath of my head. Any questions? No questions so far on um, our comments. However, again, if you have questions for any of our directors, um, feel free to put those in the comments and I'll make sure to field them to the correct director. Um, Betsy, before I move to the next presenter, I just wanted to have you clarify two quick things. Um, delegates and officers are the ones invited, correct? Yes, sorry. Uh, yes, of course, national officers are uh, expected to attend uh, and their spouses if they wish. Okay. Um, we will do the seventh degree opening and opening the Grange each day as usual. So we'll need the officers there, yes. And there will be no seventh degree uh, exemplified. That's correct. There will be nothing else 
uh, except the resolution work and the memorial service and the election of the two executive committee members whose terms are up. Uh, mm -hmm. all, the other, all the other things that uh, the other directors will tell you about will not be happening, including no seventh degree this year. And then the last thing um, was if there will be some or all of this uh, convention that will be available virtually in some way, either to our members or to the delegates. To the delegates, I'm sure you'll address them individually and directly, but for our members, we've started talking about that and we'll continue to plan for what can be virtual, correct? Yes, uh, no definite decision on that yet, but we're making plans for some type of virtual um, watching what's going on and uh, for delegates who just can't make the trip. Okay. So more on that later. Excellent. Okay. So, um, and delegates should know that uh, the executive committee and Betsy will be in touch as this evolves because things could change, um, you know, from what you're hearing now, but right now we do know that this will not include any of these specific things uh, or visitors to the session, period. Correct. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to move on to National Lecturer Chris Hamp because I saw that we had some questions in that vein. Um, and then on to Pete Pomper. So Chris, um, you have under your department some contests, the presentation of the Quilts of Valor and some other things. So I will let you talk on those. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Amanda. And uh, hello, everybody. Welcome uh, from sunny Spokane today. The first thing that I want to touch on today is the evening of excellence. And as Betsy said, there will not be um, an evening of excellence or any other contest at the National Convention. However, we are hoping that the states still conduct some sort of um, contest for their talent, whether that's uh, in person by the time you get to your convention or whether that's virtually somewhere along the way. But um, all the states that do end up with a um, best of show winner for your state, we will do an evening of excellence or maybe it'll take two or three evenings um, where we'll do kind of like we've been doing with the date night in um, events where we'll highlight those winners um, from the states as um, the evening of excellence participants. So more information will, will be out after today. We'll get you know, follow up out, but that's the game plan for right now is, is the hope and the expectation that the states will still conduct a talent contest of some sort and choose a best of show to represent their state um, in that uh, virtual evening of excellence later on on a date to be determined um, later in the year. The next thing I want to touch on is the mercantile. So I know that there are many of you out there that are making things or we're planning on making things for the mercantile and what we ask you to do is um, keep making them if you want, but hold on for them to them for now. Don't send those to Pennsylvania and we'll get figured out um, what we're gonna do next year in Kansas. But um, the items that were left over from Minnesota, we're gonna um, try to get our hands on those boxes and, and get that stuff out into the light of day um, take some photographs and figure out a way to put that in an uh, online store where we can share those items and, and we can get them out to our membership as a whole and, and see if we can't sell those and, and raise some funds for the, for the foundation. The foundation that's been so good to us in, in sponsoring all of the Cultivating Connection shows. So, um, so look forward to seeing those items in, again, some sort of a virtual mercantile online store. And for those of you, just as a, as a uh, connection, those of you that remember the store that we set up for the 150th gala fundraising, 
um, it would maybe look something similar to that. So where you could go on, see an item, place a bid, maybe have an outright buy it now bid price, you know, that sort of thing. Um, the photo showcase. The photo showcase is a chance for each state to send their best of show winner to the national convention. And then we have those photos judged and, and show those to everybody at session. Um, that photo showcase will not um, occur. However, I am um, looking at putting together a photo contest um, since the, the funding for the prizes is there and it would be open to all members and it would be open for them to submit up to three. Um, you would submit those all electronically um, just like we've got it set up this year for the publicity item contest. You would submit your photos in an entry form. And then when you submit those photos, um, there's, a, there's another purpose here. And, and when you submit those photos, you're giving the National Grange um, permission to, to utilize those in our publications and flyers and, and online things and, and stuff like that. So look forward to seeing something about um, a photo contest coming out here in, in the next week or so. Um, publicity item contest, which I also just mentioned, that will continue. Um, same contest, um, same deadlines, um, same information that's been out there since last November. And I know that even with a lot of things canceled, there's still a lot of you doing wonderful things. And I want to recognize that. And I want everybody to, to see those those things that you're doing. So please take a look at that and um, please continue to plan to submit those entries. And there's no need to wait to the last second. If that event has already come and gone, get online, enter that and, and get it checked off your to-do list. And, and then we can, we can uh, manage that a little bit better than getting them all in the last couple of days. So again, publicity item contest, no change. Um, go for it, get that, get those into us and, and uh, so we can show you off. The Quilt of Valor presentation, unfortunately, um, will also um, be a no-go in November. The hope is, is that those folks that you had in mind to recognize, and I know that there were a lot of quilts being made across the country and especially in Pennsylvania for, for those folks um, to receive a Cult of Valor on Wednesday night of convention. Once we get back up and, and having meetings and public gatherings, make sure that those folks are recognized locally at a local Grange meeting or at a state convention or at a special you know, meeting of the city council, something, make that presentation and make sure that those folks aren't forgotten or aren't left, you know, for another four or five years till we cycle back into that area, into that region. Um, so that's my, my hope is that um, you keep those, those names on the, on the top of the list and, and make those presentations happen. Um, next up is the quilt block contest. So the quilt block contest is another one that really this does not affect um, one iota. In fact, I expect to get more quilt blocks than any other year. And that's because I know that there's a ton of, of you out there that are digging into those stashes of material and you're, you're making masks by the thousands. Well, um, you know, every hundred masks make a couple quilt blocks or something and, and switch it up a little bit and, um, and get those quilt blocks in. Every one of those quilt blocks as we've talked about before, gets to be part of something bigger and gets to be a part of an awesome quilt. And then those quilts um, go to become family heirlooms and, and treasured um, items for generations. So um, again, every quilt block 
is going to get used the same due date of October 31st. They will get judged. You will hear from me and uh, thank you for submitting it. They just won't make the trip to Pennsylvania to get hung up and, and shown to everybody else. But we'll figure out how to how to display them virtually so that folks can see how many came in and, and what that what that looks like on my end um, for all of you that, that make them one one or two at a time. Thing on my list and hopefully Amanda if there's something I've missed they can um, send send some comments or some questions and, and we can do a, a go back and, and pick them up but the final thing is the the showcase um, for the region or the best of the states and that's something that since I've been national lecturer we focused on that being just representative of the states in the host region. And I know this year, Jen Noss, the lecturer in Pennsylvania, was helping coordinate her counterparts in the rest of that region. And again, because of statements already made about what convention will be um, cut down to, that showcase um, will not occur. And um, unfortunate, but uh, We'll um, hopefully be able to pick it up again next year in Kansas. So those are the items that I had on my list. Hopefully that was enough information to satisfy most of your questions. And again, um, please look for um, information coming out in the next few days, in the next week, that will um, get, get more information out and then we'll um, Hope that Stephanie can help us get it up on the, the website as well, where you're used to finding the rest of the lectures items. But we'll get that out to you and make sure that that nobody's uh, running around in the dark. We'll, we'll make the light shine. So thank you. And if you've got some questions, throw them at us. Okay, thank you so much, Chris. That covers, I think, everything that I had under my list of things that are under you. Um, and you covered the showcase, which we did have a question about. Uh, asking whether or not the Pennsylvania or regional items would go to Kansas. Uh, so I think that those are just kind of on hold, unfortunately. Um, and so if there's updates to that, you'll see them in the patron chain this week. We'll be sending a collection of this information to all of your state newsletter editors, communications directors, and um, state masters, and the national officers later this week. So don't feel like you had to chicken scratch write all this down immediately, but um, hopefully it's getting you the information you need. Um, Pete. Pete Pomper is on. He's our National Grange Community Service Director um, and has several programs under his department, including the National Firefighter, Teacher, uh, and Law Enforcement Officer of the Year, and some other things uh, that he works on with some of the other departments. So I know that you might have some crossover with Mandy and, and Samantha, uh, which is why I kind of wanted to group you all together. Um, so Pete, where are we with your stuff? Well, we're, we're where we normally are this time of year. Uh, all, all the programs that I oversee projects are still on. Uh, there's some changes, but they're still on. As you mentioned, the as I call them, the of the year, the firefighter EM, slash EMT, teacher, and law enforcement officer year, uh, those are still on. Those nomination forms are on the National Grange website. Uh, you know, we will take one from each one of each from each state has how we have been doing that. I need those as soon as you uh, decide each state who that winner is, please send that to me so I can get them judged. Uh, this year, obviously we make the presentations at national session. Uh, if I do get the forms in time, I realize there's a lot of uh, uh, logistical issues this year, then I will bring those to national. If not, uh, we will make sure that the winners the state master of each winner gets those and they can distribute it in their state to the proper winner. That's a very popular program. I know the uh, New England states now have basically started that process and have had their regional winners already. Uh, program that we do with the uh, conjunction with the youth department is the Youth Community Service Person of the Year. You know, last year we named that the Wib and June Justine youth community service winner. 
Uh, we are continuing that. I believe Mandy has that form on her website, her part of the website, I believe. If you can't find that, let us know. We'll get you that. Each state can nominate basically as many youth as you would like individually. And a winner will be picked. Uh, they will be named. And thanks to Loretta staying on my case in a kind way. Uh, we're going to have a plaque at the National Grange Building that uh, has each winner's name on it. So that as people come in, they can see that. I think it's a very big honor, very important thing to do. Yeah, each state uh, each service director fills out a form for me, uh, calculating numbers and getting information and kind of reporting on what their states are doing. Uh, this year, we're going to do an addendum to that. And that's going to be a separate page, actually. And we're really starting to gather a lot of, of, of finite information and, and hoping that a Grange member for each Grange will fill that out. We want to collect as close to the real time numbers as we can, looking to collect like, if, yeah, we mentioned masks. Uh, we'll go with uh, Ruth Blasting game out of Illinois. You know, we know she's made over 900 masks. Well, I got that number, but you know, I also like to know how much time has she spent? How much money has been spent? Who that's affected? I know she has sent some to the National Grange building for, for our staff members to use. Uh, you know, I'm hoping that a lot of states will get me that information. We'll be sending that out. I'm not sure how we're gonna get it all sent out. Uh, we'll get it out, hopefully get to each Grange, have someone fill it out so we can tabulate those numbers. And the reason we wanna do that is one, because Grange don't like to brag about themselves, so we'll brag for you. But also as Burton Eller, our National Legislative Director, you know, Amanda, Mandy, Samantha are talking to different national organizations about the Grange. They can say, well, what are you doing? Well, they'll have these numbers that they can then use to help us. One, people realize the Grange is still active, alive, and doing a lot of, a lot of amazing things, but get some grants. You know, grant, grant people like numbers and they like to have the numbers that we can back up. So we're asking Grangers to fill these out and they'll, they will find someplace to put it on the National Grange website. Uh, hopefully Grange, state Granges can then go ahead and, and send them out to the individual Granges for me. Uh, put them in your newsletters or state newspapers. They can just cut it, either mail it to me, scan it and email it to me, however they want to do it. It'd be a wonderful thing. Also, you know, as you said, generally each year at national session, we do a community service project where they will collect items, whether it's uh, New England's done hat and, uh, mittens and hats, some places have done um, toiletry items, stuff like that. I will hope that each state grange, now understanding we're not quite sure what state grange sessions are gonna look like. They're gonna be multi and varied, but if they could also collect a community service items at their state sessions and, and help out a, uh, a local uh, group that could use it. That'd be wonderful. Now for the, the big one, community service books. Uh, this is going to be a big change. Still judging the books. We're going to judge the books. The issue is how are we going to judge the books? And there's no way logistically that I could have the books sent to me, me send them to the judges who do not live anywhere near each other and get them back to me in time. So in my infinite wisdom, and you can blame me for this, is I'm asking that the state winning community service books be scanned and emailed to me. Now I realize that's a big difference, but I, I firmly believe that there's someone in each state that could scan that and email it to me. If they can't, uh, don't forget National Grange does have as part of our benefits, Loretta, thank you, uh, deals with Office Max, Office Depot, that uh, last I checked, don't hold me to this, but it wasn't that expensive per page. So it's another reason to kind of look at the guidelines we've been suggesting for your community service books and maybe pair them down a little bit. 
You know, sometimes less is more. This is going to be a great case where less is more. And we're still working through that. But I'm asking as soon as the states select their winning community service book, if you could email, you know, scan it, email it to me. I'm going to start them in a file. We're going to collect them. That way, then I can, when I get them, I can send them to the judges. They can judge them. We can get back. Uh, also, it gives us a way to collect that information and we can send that out to the different states. Hey, if everybody wants to see what all the state winning books look like, here it is. And we can now start gathering that information. So that is how we're going to do it this year. I, I realize it's going to be uh, fun in ways, but uh, I think it's going to work. I think it's the best way to do it because Granges need to be recognized for what they're doing. And Granges are doing, as Chris has said, and everybody has said, Granges are doing, Granges and Grangers are doing amazing things and they need to be recognized for it. So if you have questions about that, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions, feel free to ask. All my contact information is on the Master Grange website. I've already received a couple of emails, calls, questions, which are great. And we'll work through this together. We will absolutely work through this together. So thank you, Chris. Thanks, Sister Betsy, for this opportunity. And uh, anybody, any questions? We have no Comments? questions for you so far, Pete. <laughs> so I think we're OK right now. But I'm waiting. They're, they're probably typing slowly, and we're a few seconds behind. Um, I forgot that um, I was going to mention the Communication Fellows Program. Uh, so I just wanted to talk about that really quickly before I turn this over to Sam. Uh, Communications Fellows obviously won't happen this year because we won't have a convention. <laughs> so there's uh, nowhere that you are coming to do some of that work. However, um, we do have some people who are interested in that program and um, I'm going to work to get an application together so that um, we actually start doing training virtually uh, on some basic communications principles with the folks who are interested in doing the program and have it as a longer training session um, virtually for the next uh, year, basically. And then the capstone becomes coming to convention um, after they've work, walked through some of that uh, learning and knowledge and they're able to put it to use in a hands-on fashion at uh, the 2021 convention. So look for information on that uh, soon. All right, so Sam, uh, you and Mandy have similar programs. And so I'm gonna start with you because Mandy has something to uh, announce and remind us of at the end. Uh, so Sam, your junior contest, junior at heart contest, ambassador program, um, and the regional contest information is all up for grabs. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, I am excited about the possibilities that are coming forth now with everything we're having to deal with. I know I'm gonna miss my juniors seeing them at session immensely, um, but I want them to know that all of the contests are still a go. So when it comes to our digital talent, creative art, creative writing, the mini scrapbooks, the photography, the handicrafts, the membership contest, and even the Granger at Heart contest, all of them are still go. Um, typically, they're always sent to me by the 1st of October. Um, the format, of course, of how we display them and display the winners will be a little bit different this year. Um, and we're working with our current junior ambassadors on how we will um, honor and showcase all of our winners for this year. Um, a couple of other contests, they're still going to be, um, we're still going to do them. The Junior Historian, the Agricultural Awareness Award, um, even our Cape of Honor, which is our community service based award and our community service books, which Pete talked about as well. Um, all of those are still going to have their October 1st deadlines. Um, our quilt block contest, of course, as Chris said, is still going on. Um, so not a lot of changes when it comes to that. Everything will still come and be submitted to me or to the department heads that they go to, like the quilt block and the community service books. Um, from there, we um, are going to talk about baseball. Um, our that was our new contest for this year, um, replicating the youth department's Grange baseball. Um, and so we are going to take that for a spin as we've been doing these trivia nights. Um, so we're not going to hold it as necessarily as a contest, but we do want the juniors to have the opportunity to kind of see what it would have been like um, and to test their Grange knowledge a little bit. 
So um, we are going to have a trivia night sometime in September. So more information about that will come out. Um, we'll have signups in August for all the juniors that may be interested. And then in September, we're going to hold a Grange baseball night for them. So I'm really excited to have juniors participate in that, start studying up on some of their Grange knowledge. Um, this is such a great time for them as everybody is kind of stuck at home to really take part uh, in the junior programming from the contest. When your kiddos are bored at home, giving them something to do, this is a great opportunity um, for them to submit something. And as always, any of the contest entries can come directly to me. They don't have to be filtered through your state first. So um, all contest entries come straight um, to the national level. Um, I know there's been lots of questions about the ambassador program. And first I want to thank Bryce and Brianna, my current um, national junior ambassadors for all of their hard work and for just absolutely being on top of things and um, really coming up with some great ideas for you guys that are going to take place over the summer. Um, I do want to announce, though, that we will be moving forward with um, a 2021 ambassador program. So I want to encourage all of the states to please have your juniors submit their applications to be the next junior ambassadors. Bryce and Brianna are going to still um, be there in some way, shape, or form as sort of a mentor to the next team. Um, and still be able to be a part of some things for the following year, as they did miss out on a few opportunities. But over the course of July, which is Junior Grange Month, um, they are going to be bringing all of the workshops that they would have been presenting at the regional contest. Um, they're going to be showcasing those throughout the month of July um, on our Cultivating Connections takeover by the juniors. So um, I'm re they're really excited. I'm excited for them. Um, also, they're going to be... Um, doing a couple of other projects for the for the juniors out there so stay tuned for more information on that as it comes out um i'm trying to think if there's any other little things um i do i do want to still encourage the directors the state and the local directors to submit their director's reports um which are always due october 1st um especially in this time of in this year there's a lot of new things and new um ways we've gone about doing some things um i know that there's some states that are hosting virtual camps and virtual meetings and we want to know about that we want to know what you're doing um so please encourage directors out there to please submit your information um, and your reports on October 1st. Other than that, I think that pretty much sums up most of the junior contest and um, the ambassador program. If anybody does have questions, concerns, or anything like that, do feel free to reach out to me. Um, and if you do have an ambassador that you're, you were hoping to send this year, do contact me um, so I can give you more information on that. And um, we look forward to seeing what next year brings. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Pete, thank you so much for starting a discussion that, uh, that we have had here on the sidebar about um, digitizing notebooks. Um, we have noted that if you are going to digitize a notebook um, and you put it through most programs, they will be larger than what community service at nationalgrange.org can receive. For those of you who don't know, we have a 10 megabyte limit on the emails that can come in to us. And so you will likely have to uh, either break those up or have to put them on like Google Drive or Dropbox. We will hold a training session on how to do that uh, later this summer. Uh, and it will be something that you'll be able to go back and access if necessary. Uh, we will not be able to troubleshoot all of your devices because there are so many uh, different devices, but uh, we will at least be able to tell you how to take a file and get it to uh, the Dropbox or the, the Google Drive location. And honestly, actually, Pete, I hate to say it, I think that this is a really great move because we're providing that training that hopefully our other departments will be able to use similar, um, similar op options later for different things. So, so thanks, Pete. Thanks for that, Amanda. <laughs> no problem. Okay, um, so uh, Betsy, um, there are a couple of things that some of the officers have asked. Um, I know you'll be checking the comments on the sidebar and I've just noted that there are things that are officer and delegate specific that you'll be sending emails about. Um, I should just mention that um, Phil Prelly uh, 
suggested that we remind everybody, especially from the delegates and officers who will be attending, that these plans are fluid. We don't have everything definitive right now. Um, so you will be sending emails to the specific people who will be in attendance um, in that officer and delegate core throughout this process. Um, and so some of the information to them may change, but from the departments, this is the information that will go on. So. Um, all right, so I think that we have the last department chair to talk, and then um, I'll remind you that uh, after Mandy's done, if there are no questions on the comments side, then we'll end. So if you have questions, you should probably start putting them in now. Uh, so I will turn this over to Mandy Bostwick, our National Youth Development Director. Thanks, Amanda. Um, so I'm going to start off with the events and contests that will be canceled um, entirely. We're not going to have Parley Pro this year. There are too many little details that I'm not entirely sure how we would work out over Zoom. Um, so we will not hold a Parley Pro contest this year. Um, along with the code reading contest, we will also not have. I have been talking to the assembly and we're gonna try to make this a regional contest in hopes to get some more people involved um, with it. Cause I know not everybody gets to go to nationals. And so if they could do it at regional, we're, we're gonna try it out anyway. Um, and then obviously we're not gonna have the John Trimble legislative youth or the youth officer team because the majority of their time spent is at national. So those are all of our canceled events. Um, the September 1st deadline will stay in place for our, our um, WIB and June Justy Youth Community Service Award, our Junior Mentor Award, our Youth Membership Award and our Distinguished Youth. We'll still keep those. Um, and just like with Loretta's on the Distinguished Grange, the Distinguished Youth, we can total those up with the cancellation of events and we will make those necessary changes. Um, the Pillar Projects will be a digital submission just like Pete's Community Service ones. Um, September 1st, I still do need notification that you are sending one in. And then after that, um, I will release a new deadline since they were to come to national. Um, I'm not quite sure what that deadline will be yet, but I will let the youth directors in each state know. Um, Sam already, Samantha already kind of covered Grange baseball. We will be having a baseball night in September. Um, and so I'm not going to talk too much about that, but it's going to be ran the same way as the juniors will be done. Uh, Grow Club, we have a meeting sometime this month. I honestly don't remember the date, but I know it's soon. And I will be talking to them about what they want to go forward with and how, along with Betsy, need to talk to her about how we want to do that. Um, so I don't have any information on Grow Club at this time. And the last thing is ambassadors. I too am also going to go forth with naming a new team in 2021. I will still be using Tracy and Philip Jones, JC Jetty and Alexis Cuts to help me with things in 2021. And we are going to continue to keep them in the public eye as much as possible um, this year through cultivating connections and talking to youth directors and those types of things so they can get, um, the most out of this year, but I will be using them in the future as well. Um, I think that honestly covers everything in my department, in my department, it's not plural. Um, so yeah, and then Amanda had said that I had an announcement or a reminder that the 20 for 20 ice bucket challenge did kick off this morning. It is the youth department's year to fundraise. And since we can't go to regionals and we can't go to national that we are fundraising virtually and doing an ice bucket challenge. Um, you don't have to wait to be challenged. You can go ahead and take it now and go challenge some other people. So yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry that I don't have an ice bucket here to dump over my head. And I'm glad to see that you are uh, no longer wet because your profile picture on Facebook certainly shows that you've been been dumped on. Um, Sam, I know that you said that you would like to bring up your public speaking and sign a song. So um, I'd like to kick that back to you. 
Sure. Yes. Um, one of the things I don't, Mandy and I forgot to mention is the public speaking and sign a song contest for the juniors and the youth departments are still going. Um, we are going to be doing them virtually through Zoom. Um, one of the things we have a June 15th deadline to sign up for the contest right now. Um, that link is available um, on our Facebook pages and online um, on our websites. I think Amanda can probably post it for you guys as well in the comments. Um, and then after the June 15th deadline, we'll be setting a date mid-July for the contestants to compete. We will judge, they will be judged of course by region still. Um, and then uh, for the national level, we will take those best of show winners from the public speaking and the sign a song contest. And they will be, they will present um, sometime later this year, probably November time frame um as one of the date night in scenarios um and we're going to host all of the regional winners probably sign a song one night public speaking another or mix them up we'll see those are little details we're still working out but we do want to encourage anybody and everybody that wants to participate from juniors to youth to young adults to subordinate members um if they are interested in performing a sign a song or public speaking um to please get their information in and um submitted by june 15th all right, great. Um, so a couple quick clarifications and questions. One for Pete. Uh, Pete, the question was previously, did the um, community service books not come in with the state master and get judged at the national session? Yes, they were either brought by the state master or mailed to the hotel was the way it was done. Uh, this year, we do not have enough time for that. By the time the state masters get them to me, if they show up, say, Tuesday morning, they drive in Tuesday morning, uh, we're done Wednesday afternoon, that does not give the judges enough time to fairly judge the books. In addition, your judges will not be there, correct? Judges probably won't be there. Okay, so... That does require then this change. So that, that should hopefully explain it. But of course, if you have any specific questions on that program, uh, reach out to Pete at community service at nationalgrange.org um, or by phone, he's available on the staff page of the National Grange website. Um, Betsy, there was a question actually regarding state granges and eligibility of delegates who may not be able to attend because of health concerns and the ability for virtual voting. And so I know but that's something you're gonna to have to address directly with states and the masters uh, rather than here. And it may require something uh, where you have to make a ruling. So people will have to follow the formal process in order to get the information. Uh, so I just figured I would alert you to that question, but if there's anything that you wanna tell them about what you're hoping that they do in this current time or um, how you hope they, they move forward, uh, feel free. Okay. Um. We are not sure how state granges are going to have their sessions, but I do want to encourage them to um, find some way to do it, either in person or virtually, or a scaled down version like National is doing, uh, because we still need your resolutions. There's uh, not much point in us getting together at National if we don't have any resolutions to discuss and vote on. So I'm want to encourage the states to and the starting at the subordinate level write those resolutions and send them through the process um, we will be talking more about uh, what happens if the state master cannot attend or uh, doesn't want to risk anything by attending we'll have to discuss that with the board further um, and we'll be in contact with the state masters about that. I, I did tell them, uh, we met by Zoom last Thursday night with all of, almost all of the state masters. And uh, we told them that the committee work will be done in advance. So don't worry about that. <laughs> the, the last uh, three years or more, the committees have been meeting by Zoom to review the present policy. And this year they'll be doing that again and also doing the resolutions that way. So there's, there's a two week time frame between the last state convention 
and the national convention. So that two weeks will be full of Zoom meetings with committees working on resolutions so that when they get to Valley Forge, all that preliminary work will be done and we'll just be able to uh, present the resolutions on the floor and vote on them. Um, as you notice, we have a lot of information that we provided to you here. Uh, we'll do a synopsis this week in our patrons chain. We'll be sending that out, as I noted, to the states to publicize. Um, we do hope that you share this information. That is one of the biggest areas where we find a breakdown. And it's not just because I'm your communications director that I want to say this, but our communications structure really is lacking. Uh, we do notice that a lot of folks get information years after it's relevant or um, years after it, uh, it happened, not just months. Um, and in this case, it's really important to have that information out to your members as quickly as possible because it does impact their ability to uh, participate in many of the things that they enjoy. So please make sure that as you get that information, uh, you are giving it out to everybody in your subordinate range at your promoter level at your state range, whatever your task. And if you're not tasked um, to be the specific communications person, that doesn't mean you can't be. Um, so please share this information as much as you can. Uh, we still encourage you, if you have any questions, you can contact any of the directors that you saw on here. Um, and I noticed that there was one other question about the judging specific um, of the ambassadors since they won't have the same uh, privileges or opportunities that we have in the past where they get judged face to face. So um, if you don't mind, I think I'm gonna kick this back to Mandy and I will remind you this is kind of last call for questions, not because we don't want them, but because at some point we're gonna to have to wrap up here. So um, if you have any questions at all, make sure to please put them in the comments section on YouTube or Facebook and we will catch up with you. So Mandy. Yes, I actually had it in my notes to talk about. I overlooked it. I apologize. Um, so we will be ho hosting um, interviews just like we would at national session for the ambassadors. They will still need to turn in digitally their, um, their notebooks that are required this year of what they've done. I know they're probably going to be a little bit lacking um, due to all the cancellation of things, but I still want to see those. That way I can pass them along to the judges. Um, but yes, we will be doing interviews by Zoom meeting and yeah, so that's how they will be judged this year. And the applications are the same. They're due by September 1st. Um, applications are on the website and in the youth handbook. Okay, great. Um, did any of you notice anything that you feel like you overlooked or missed that you'd like to just touch on one more time or you feel like maybe you've seen the comments and something didn't seem to be clarified or, or if there were questions that you'd like to address? Okay. Um, one thing. Oh, there you go. One thing uh, with the books, uh, I appreciate all the conversation about it, uh, all the different ideas, some stuff I had not thought of. So I do appreciate that. And again, we only need the state winning book. So uh, some good ideas. I need to look into a couple of them. But again, the, I think the training idea, man, is a great idea. Because I don't know. And uh, OK. Um, so just for, for final clarification, Pete, community service books are judged at the state level, and only the state winner is sent to you. Correct. Chris, typically photo contest winners have been judged at the state level and only the state winner has been sent to you. However, that has been changed for this year. Is that correct? Yes, the, the thing that I'm noodling around in my brain that, that came out today and so we'll uh, make it so and, and get the information out is that instead of the best of show coming to convention, um, we'll just, change it up a, a whole bunch and open it up to anybody as up to three entries per person, um, no categories. And um, with the hope that uh, we can get a bunch of photos that we can use as stock photos for National Grange publications and, and usage down the road. Um, so it'll, still be, it'll still just be um, one category. So 
one category for second, third, um, that's, that's it, so. Uh, Samantha, you mentioned that all of your contacts and programs are open to come directly to you from um, the juniors or um, the submissions go directly to you. They do not have to go through the states. Does that include the ambassador candidates? The ambassador candidates are um, in a ballpark of their own. So they will still need to have the same recommend, uh, letters of recommendation from their state masters, their junior directors and so forth. Um, so that will have to still be, that will still be the same. They'll, they will still submit their application just as they normally would, which does come straight to me. Um, and from there, we will send that out to our judges to review. And then we will hold our interviews for um, the ambassador for the next ambassador um, team in October. So ambassador applications are due September 1st and they should expect to have their interviews done in October. Um, one of the other things I wanted to clarify, I saw that there was a question that we had um, that was related to the sign a song and public speaking contest. Um, some states hold their own contest, their own public speaking and sign a song contest and then send their participants to the regional contest. Um, there is not a national rule that we have in place for that to happen. So um, anybody and everybody is welcome to participate regardless of um, state contest. Um, typically the state contests are utilized in um, their sponsorship of getting them to regional contests us. So um, anyone is welcome again to participate in the sign of song and public speaking regardless of their state. So there can be multiple people from multiple states participating. Okay. Um, Barbara Bordereau, national chaplain, uh, asked, but I think it was more reaffirming, there will be a Tuesday night memorial service at convention. Is that correct, Betsy? Yes. Okay. So there will be a Tuesday night memorial service at National Grange Convention. We will look um, at ways that we can make that available um, through a platform like this, um, but make sure that it's still respectful. So um, more information to come on all of the things that we may make available that happen at this shortened convention, um, including uh, if happening the officers march uh, on Wednesday morning or any of the other stuff that may be happening. Um, Betsy will be discussing directly with officers and delegates what is expected and what is happening and understand that that's fluid for everybody else who is not an officer and delegate, we are going to miss you. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I am going to really uh, suffer with seeing only a couple of people that we normally see and not being able to give any of them hugs. So um, I just wanted to wrap up with uh, going through our officers again, just making sure that they didn't miss anything and uh, letting them give you a quick salutation since we will not be seeing almost all of you in November. So Loretta? Yes, ma'am. Um, as you, as Amanda said, yes, we will miss everyone. Um, but we hope everyone will stay well, safe and be healthy. So we can see you the following year. And if you have any questions, you know how to reach me and everything is on the National Grange website under um, programs. And that's all I have. Thank you, ma'am. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, thank you. Chris. All right, well, um, I don't think that they've been missing me. They've been seeing us every Saturday night for the last nine weeks. and. And we'll go into the future here for some more, I hope, as well. But, uh, yeah, just keep up the great work out there, you know. And the next thing on the calendar that we're doing a ton of work for right now is Grange Revival in July of 2021. So mark it on your calendar. Check out the information, grangerevival.com. There's, uh, there's going to be... A whole bunch of stuff going on and it is going to be an epic week of uh, great time and and great food and and great fellowship going on in Sturgis South Dakota so um, it's not a it's not a, a a big gap of time so see you next summer in Sturgis if we if we don't see you in uh, in November thank you awesome thanks Chris Pete Thank you, Amanda. Uh, just one thing. I hope you keep posting what you're doing, what Granges are doing on the National Grange Community Service and Activities Facebook page. 
That's how we share this with other Grangers and Granges and how I get information. Uh, don't be afraid to brag about yourselves. When you see the form, I'm calling it addendum one. When you see that form comes out, please fill it out and send it back to me as soon as you can for each individual Grange and or Granges. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Mandy? Yeah, I'm super sad I don't get to see everybody this year, but I'm looking forward for everybody to come to my state, the great state of Kansas in 2021. So I'll see you all there. Ma'am? Of course, I am so sad. I'm going to be missing my juniors so much, um, but I look forward to seeing everything that they submit, and I really hope you encourage them and push them to send in their awesome um, contest entries because we have some amazingly talented juniors and we have a really fun way that we're going to be honoring them later this year. So um, I will miss you all, but I am excited to see what comes. Thank you. And of course, if you're an adult, so the junior at heart, the contests are open for you as well. So if you're bored, uh, don't forget those. And Betsy, don't worry, I did not forget about you. I just figured that you should round us out and close us out. Thank you. I just want to reaffirm that Everything that you've heard tonight from these directors, what you've heard from me about the convention being closed to everybody except delegates and officers, that is firm. That is a decision that's been made and that's the way it will be. However, the portion that will take place with the officers and delegates uh, is fluid because we don't know what the situation will be by November. We're hoping that this is the way it will be, but if uh, the COVID-19 spikes in the fall or uh, any number of things happen, there may have to be changes with that plan. But as of now, that's uh, the way it will be. So we'll just uh, see what happens between now and then. I just want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. It was great to have a good crowd and uh, come back again for all of Amanda's great programs the rest of the week. Thank you.